Hi, I'm Pete Popovich here at the Golf Performance Academy in Hilton Head Island, South Carolina. What I'd like to talk to you about today is the cause and effect in the golf swing. I feel that too many people work on the effects continuously and it's why they don't see the results that they want to and their progress in their game and the progress in their swing becomes limited. What I like to do is get into the causes of the golf swing to make sure that the problem is fixed correctly so that our players and our students can have a lot more success and enjoy the game a lot more. When we talk about causes, what we have to talk about in the golf swing is the physics and the physiology. So the physics side in the swing and the physiology side in the body. And what we talk about in the body is what can the body do and what the body can't do. And when we talk about that, we talk about the setup and what we found is up to 90% of all swing problems in a golf golfer swing come from a faulty setup. Uh, so if you, what we're getting at is if you can set up properly, your chances to hit the ball the way you want to hit it are significantly increased as opposed to if you set up faulty. Faulty setup, faulty swing. So what essentially happens is your setup determines your motion. When we talk about setup, we have to talk about the five fundamentals of the swing. Now the, five the five fundamentals, the first thing I'd like to address is the grip. And in the grip, whether you have a, a weak grip, a neutral grip, or a strong grip, just let me elaborate on that a little bit. A weak grip for a right-handed golfer would your hands would be turned excessively to the left. A strong grip is where your hands would be turned excessively to the right. And a neutral grip would be where your hands would fall right in between. Regardless of the type of grip you use, the most important thing to remember is your palms need to be parallel. What I mean by that is when you put your hands on the grip, your hands or your palms need to face one another. That way, when throughout the course of your swing, whether you're a weak grip, a neutral grip, or a strong grip, your hands and your arms will work in unison. And if they're working in unison, it makes it much easier to hit the ball the way that you're trying to hit it. From grip, we move into alignment. When we talk about alignment, we talk about what is known as parallel left. A parallel left is if you were to take a target line, your target line would be a line drawn from your ball to whatever target you're aimed at. You would like your feet, your knees, your hips, your shoulders, and a line drawn across your arms all parallel to that target line. As we progress, we get into stance. And when we talk about stance, we get a little bit more into the physiology of the body and what's known as load-bearing joints. The load-bearing joints are your ankles, your knees, your hips, and your shoulders. And what you like to see, ideally, the way the body was designed, is all of those load-bearing joints to be stacked one over the other. So your knees are above your ankles, your hips are above your knees, and your shoulders are above your hips. If you get too narrow, like this, and you try to make a swing, you'll notice that when you start, your shoulders are outside of your knees and your ankles. Thus, your lower body does not provide a, a, a substantial base. As you make your turn into the backswing, your shoulder is outside of your right uh, knee and your right ankle, and you lose stability. Conversely, if you get a little too wide, as you make your pivot in your backswing, your load-bearing joints will try to align themselves one over the other, and you'll see I have a big variance in the load-bearing joints on the left side of my body. So what happens in the downswing? joints on the left side of the body try to realign themselves and now you have a big sway in your swing and you'll see that the load bearing joints on the right side of my body don't align. So we like to see is those joints one over the other which would put your stance for say uh, uh, your mid irons where your feet, uh, ankles, knees, hips and shoulders are one under another. For your wedges you can have a slight variance or your lower clubs to where your feet come in slightly to where the outside of your shoulder would contact the outside of your feet or your heel on the right and on the left. And when you get into the longer clubs, your hybrids, fairway woods and driver, you can extend that slightly uh, wider than, than normal to where the outsides of your shoulder, both right and left, would be on the insides of your feet. One last thing on, on your stance is you would like to have your posture, or I'm sorry, your, your, your balance uh, evenly distributed left and right. From stance, we move into posture, and when we talk about posture, we talk about athletically ready. Now, athletically ready is a, is a common term that's used in all sports. 
So what, what you like to see is you like to see a slight bend in the knees and then a tilting forward from the waist. Okay. Now from the side, let me show you that from a side view. If you're standing erect, you like to see a slight break in the knees and a slight bending forward from the waist. You'll notice as you bend forward from your waist, your rear end will protrude out slightly and your weight will move from the middle of your foot or the saddle of your shoe slightly forward to the ball of your foot. Now one way to check yourself to make sure you have uh, proper posture, once you get in that position, if you were to draw a line through your shoulder, bisect your shoulder, that line should touch the front of your knee and extend down into the ball of your foot. Now what that does is that balances you from front to back. So in, in your stance you had balance left to right, in your posture you have balance front to back. Now these, the, another way to check that is once you take your posture, your arms would hang straight down from your shoulder blades. If you're too far from the ball and excessively reaching, your hand as it fell under your shoulder socket again would fall underneath the grip so you know you're too far. Conversely, if you're too close to the ball and in good posture, you'll notice that as you let your hand off the club and it hangs down from your shoulder blade, it would fall above the club so you know you're too close. So those are a couple ways to check your posture. Now last but certainly not least is ball position. And when we talk about ball position, we get into a little more of the physics of the swing. And when we talk about that, I'd like to show you a little theory that we came up with. It's called the oval theory of ball position. And when we talk about oval theory, we just imagine if you were to draw an oval around me where the top of that oval would touch at the very top of my head and the bottom of that oval would touch at, uh, just touch the ground or tangent with the ground and the axis of that oval would be my spine. As soon as I take my grip and my right hand goes lower on the club than my left hand, my right shoulder dips lower than my left, and that oval would tilt to the left, meaning that that oval, the bottom of that arc, is going to now tangent to the ground further forward or on the left of my stance. That is where you place your ball position. Now, the ball position moving for low irons to mid irons to high irons is a big misconception. Let me explain why. If I have my ball position right there where, where, where my center line would extend down to the ground, all right? If I have a wedge, my stance is a little more narrow. So in relationship to my body, that ball is still where that, that arc is going to tan tangent out and, and bottom out in the ground. If I take a mid iron and I get a little wider stance, I have just slightly more upper body tilt, but in relationship to my body tilt, that ball is still where that club is going to bottom out and tangent out to the ground. If I get a longer iron and I have a little wider stance still, now I have a little more upper body tilt, and as that swing comes down the bottom of that arc, is just a little more forward. So the ball position doesn't move back or forward for long irons or short irons. It's where the, 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 the club is going to bottom out. Where the club bottoms out is in relationship to where the center line of the body would contact the ground. Now, what the same ball position does is it allows you to have the same contact point for all your swings and your irons. Now, with the woods, that's a little bit different because you're ca slight, catching the ball slightly in the upswing. But it makes it much easier to have consistent timing when you're going and, and you're hitting the, the, the same spot on the ground for all your irons. And lastly, what I want to do is give you the tip of the day. And the tip of the day is the how to alter ball flight with a small degree change in your ball position. So the, the, the common way that people have been taught to alter their uh, ball trajectory is to have quite a variance uh, in, in where they place the ball in terms of, uh, of their stance. So you'll notice that the people are taught their first ball position is very far forward for a high shot. It's in the middle of the stance or slightly forward to center for a mid trajectory shot and is back in the stance for a low shot. What that does is that gives you three different timing uh, sequences and, and, and it can disrupt your swing very easily. What I like to see happen is if we take our stance, if we took this ball here in the middle, that would be your standard trajectory shot or the shot that you would hit for any standard shot. And you'll notice that uh, when we make our swing that, that the middle of that ball is where our center line would contact the ground or that arc would tangent down. If we want to hit the ball a little lower, we move the ball half a ball back. So as the club comes down and it bottoms out, it'll bottom out in the front of that ball and it'll catch the ball slightly de-lofted. If we want to hit the ball a little higher, we move the ball half a ball forward. And as the club comes down, 
catches that tangent point, it's at the back of the ball, and hits the ball a little higher. So I hope that helps your game. I hope that helps you alter your trajectory, and I hope it helps you become a better golfer. Thanks very much.